I somehow managed to get a software engineering internship my freshman year of college, so I thought I would make this video to show you guys what my resume looked like while I was applying. Because if you never pass that resume screening, you're never gonna get an interview invite. In all honesty, this video is basically me roasting my resume because it wasn't very good at all. So let's jump straight into it. Did you know that over 90% of my audience isn't subscribed? If you're enjoying the content on this channel, hit that subscribe button. All right, back to your regularly scheduled content. I think structure wise, my resume is pretty standard for an undergrad and it hits all the boxes. So we're gonna focus more on the content of my resume rather than the structure. I used a template called Jake's template, which is available on Overleaf. I'll leave a link in the description. It's really nice. It looks really clean. There's a lot of white space and it lets you keep all the information you could possibly need all under one page because as an undergrad, your internship resume should never get over one page because what have you done with your life so far? You're the goat if it's more than one page. But that point aside, this resume template is basically what most of my friends used or a similar template and it seemed to work for everybody. We managed to get internships. We passed the resume screening and got invited for interviews and the same resume template has been working pretty well for me this recruiting season. So if you were looking for a template, pick that one. All right, first of all, the header for my resume is standard. There's nothing wrong with it, just my name, phone number, email, LinkedIn, and GitHub. It just lets the automated application systems know your contact information easy. Nothing too complicated about it. Moving on to the education section, this is also pretty standard. I think the only thing I would do here, now that I'm obviously a sophomore, is get rid of high school. And I don't even think you would need the high school when you're a freshman. It's just up to you to decide whether you did anything relevant in high school classes wise for the internship. And if you did, then you could include your high school. Otherwise I would suggest against it because it's kind of pointless. All right, in terms of the actual experience section, a lot of freshmen get confused by this because you know they might not have any experience. And that's okay, if you don't have any experience doing tech stuff, just put you know whatever job you worked in high school. If you didn't work a job in high school, then your project section will just be a lot bigger. Now, for my experience section, I was lucky enough to have been a TA at my high school as well as do a little bit of a research internship. So I put both of these down. Now, my writer for the TA section, for the TA portion of the experience section was pretty solid. I used numbers, which is good. And I think I used pretty decent action verbs, but those are the two big things everybody says to do on your resume, right? Use good action verbs and put numbers, you know, numerically demonstrate the impact you had at that position. Obviously this is very hard for freshmen in college to do. If you're lucky enough to have done like really cool impact, that's great, good for you. But for somebody like me, who didn't really do a lot in high school in terms of actual impact, I had to kind of just make what I did in clubs look pretty decent. That's what I did for the TA position. Now for my research internship, you'll notice that I talk a lot about what I did without really mentioning any of the impact. And this is really weird because it was a machine learning project. So I should have put, you know, numbers related to the accuracy of the project, how big the data, how big the data set was, you know, and how I processed it and all of that. And I don't do any of that here. I use pretty random, I, I use pretty bad verbs. I say worked with, um, converted, used, and instead I should have used stronger, uh, stronger words that demonstrate impact instead of making the focus on just the things that I used, put a focus on, you know, the impact that those things have. The next section on my resume was the competitions and personal projects section. And this was honestly the section that probably carried my resume because this demonstrated the technology that I was actually able to use. I put down three pretty cool projects. Um, one that I built for Hack MIT, one that I did at high school for a competition, and then another one that I did in high school. Now, obviously, as you progress, a lot of people will say, you know, don't put things that you did in high school on your resume in college. And I said that like five minutes ago. But if you think you did something cool and you did something that demonstrates that you know how to code or whatever position you're applying for, then definitely put it down, especially if it's a decent project, it's not some script kitty thing. So again, let's talk about what the problems were with this section. Again, we look at the first one. Vidya is the name I put for the app. And again, I say built this thing that uses this technology, created a front end using React. Um, and again, there's no numbers, no impact shown because I never released the project. There were no users. So it was hard for me to come up with, uh, you know, uh, numbers to put down. But another, something that I could have done would have been talk about the time that the application runs. How fast does it run? You know, how good is it at summarizing the YouTube videos? How good is it at transcribing? How good is it at using the API? Because I didn't do any of the work of summarizing or transcribing. That was all done via API but I should have talked about something. I should have put some numbers in there, whether it was runtime uh, or you know accuracy, something like that. And again, this is a 
common mistake you'll see in everything so far on my resume is that I don't talk about impact enough. And if you're building side projects, release them. I, this is, you know, this is blind leading the blind here because I don't really release my own side projects, which is a mistake. And I'm trying to get better at that and I'll do better this semester. But if you're releasing your side projects, you have a better chance of, you know, getting a few users, which is great because anybody will be like, okay, if you can get like five users, that's really good. And it'll look good on your resume when you're talking about it. Moving on to Samsung software tomorrow of the Samsung software tomorrow competition. Again, machine learning project. And again, I didn't put down any of the accuracy numbers. Just kind of stupid. It's like, just put it down. It makes your resume look more polished and more professional because once again, you have a quantitative impact listed on your resume. If you do, it just makes your resume look better to recruiters and more professional and more or less sus. Then again, we go to another machine learning project. And again, I have no mention of accuracy numbers. I really don't know why I thought that this was a smart thing to do. I guess I was just uncultured in the way of resumes. I've changed all this now, by the way. And if you will, guys want, I can put a resume up. I can make another video showing that resume. But now I have numbers for all of these projects. I put up the accuracy numbers so that it looks better. But again, I'm hitting kind of like the keywords, right? I'm putting down all the keywords that you would need. I'm putting down, uh, I mentioned Python a lot. I mentioned PyTorch, I mentioned TensorFlow, I mentioned Git and all of that. And that's good because you need to have those keywords to pass that automatic screening. But you know, when an actual recruiter or an engineer looks at your resume and there's no numbers, it looks sus, it doesn't look good. That's why I barely got any interviews last year. I had like four interviews and I got, and then I ended up getting three offers. If I had numbers on here, I might've gotten a lot more interviews and more offers to choose from. But, you know, don't cry over spilt milk. Learn from my mistakes and use action verbs and numbers in your resume. All right, let's look at the technical skills slash award section of my resume. And this is where we learn not to lie on your resume, kids. So if we look at languages, there's a lot of languages there. But at this point in time, I basically written every language that I knew how to write Hello World in. And I know that's the meme with developers. Just put it on your resume if you can write Hello World in it. But don't do that. At this point in time, I shouldn't have put Go, Rust, or PHP on my resume because I haven't really built any projects with that. Now I feel comfortable putting Go on my resume, but I still don't feel comfortable putting Rust. And I would suggest making sure that you know the language before you put it on your resume because if an interviewer asks you about that language and you don't know what you're talking about, that's GG's. Your interview is done. You're not going to be working in that company for a while. If you look at frameworks, the same thing would apply here, but here, in this case, my frameworks selection was fine. And then we go into developer tools. Developer tools is interesting because here I put text editors and IDEs, VS Code, Visual Studio, PyCharm, IntelliJ, Eclipse. Why did I put those down? That's expected that you should be able to use an IDE. You shouldn't need to put that down. I don't know if this helps with recruiters, but I just think it kind of looks stupid. And I guess if an engineer was looking at your resume, they're like, why did he put VS Code down? It's, it's stupid. Yeah, you should be able to use VS Code. Anybody can use VS Code. But things like Git, Docker, um, you know, whatever cloud platform you know how to use, Firebase, those are good to put because those are, you know, not necessarily programming languages, but that's technology you're using that's not crazy easy to learn. And, you know, having experience of that is helpful and it looks good to engineers and recruiters. And then of course we have libraries. Um, these are just basically the Python libraries I've used. And then awards, which are just, you know, any awards that you've been given that might be relevant to the field of computer science or programming. And yeah, that's my entire resume. I hope you enjoyed the roast. And if you have any suggestions, if you wanna roast my resume, feel free to do so in the comments. Just be nice, don't be too mean, I'm very sensitive. That's the video, I hope you can take something away from this, You know, even if it's just the resume template and you didn't learn anything from my failures, but I hope you did. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, it really helps the channel out. Also, go follow me on Instagram at SidCodes with two Ds and Twitter with at SidCodes with one D. Also, join the Discord server if you want to talk to cool people. And thank you so much for watching all the way through. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. And peace out.